liberated invites you to look at things a little differently, to consider new ideas about horses, new ways to teach them. Get Liberated is the spirit behind Equine Liberty Sports. In my travels, I get opportunities to show you something a little different, and I'll do my best to get them to you. Recently, we traveled to play with a rescue mare who is learning the program. It was mentioned to me that this mare does not want to back up at all. And I said, I may have some ideas. So let's have a look at that. Ginger, a rescue mare from the Triple R Horse Rescue, is presenting challenges typical of horses with a strong mind. Usually, I would have a treat in my hand and I would tap her chest. Let me show you something. Horses like these use their bodies to manage their space and to make a stand, literally. You can push on a horse like this and not get very far, or you can try to hurl a lot of energy at her. But there are other ways of helping her. So she's like seriously planting her front end. Yeah. Okay. I know, sweetie, I know. See, see how she plants his yep. foot right here? Okay. Good. See, if I can do a hip over, I can usually direct the back feet to do something, even if it's just that. Yep. Very hard to direct front feet that don't want to move, but you can direct back feet a lot easier because when you do a hip over, they're already moving. If you understand how horses move, how they move their feet, you can cause things to happen by working with their bodies, not against them. Getting her to pick up any of those feet when she's got like these pillars in the ground, really hard to do, particularly to go backwards. Going forward, not so hard. So, it's okay, sweetie. By doing a hip over and then starting to free up the front end, if I can get the feet to move at all, I can start to direct them. But if I try to, to do that when she's got all of her energy grounded, you're all right, sweetie. Good girl. Oh, don't be mad. Come on. Good. Good girl. So the, so the thinking is, if I can get her feet just to move, then she'll start moving them, even though she's kind of, you know, resisting me a little bit. But when she gets into this habit of doing this, I can start to direct it, even if it's by accident. Hi, she says, I'll come into you all day long. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna swing her. I'm gonna loosen up her front end a little bit. There we go, okay. This might work better for her. Okay, if I were to push here, she's gonna push against me. If I swing her from side to side, what happens is, is that she's gonna go through some very subtle, although she's, th she's thinking she has my game now. It's all right. So you'll feel her body kind of soften. That's it. Good girl. Okay. You want me to do the same thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of get in here, move her from side to side, okay. and you'll feel her body start to soften. Am I putting pressure going backwards? Ginger's body is locked. Imagine that she's a boulder. I need to turn her body into a pile of soft clay and then the feet are freed up to move. Every time you do that, there's a subtle shift in her weight which means that picking up her feet now is gonna come a little more easy. Then you'll feel her body kind of get soft, right? And when you feel that, if you were to push, she'll probably go back. It's gonna be bigger turns, bigger pushes. There you go, that's it. There you go, good, nice. So you're, you're softening the front end because she's sitting here going, Ur! so we're trying to soften it. Okay, now, now you need to push her more towards me. Really push her, even more. Step into her. 
There you go. Good. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Softening the front end will ease the resistance in her mind. It will be like a floodgate opening up and she will really begin to yield her body, which means that Sherry can then teach her to back up with ease. Tell her back when she's backing. If you say back and she doesn't back for several seconds, she doesn't make the connection. She needs to be backing and then, and what you're going to do is you're going to add it as she's backing. Back. Okay. Let's try again. A little bit more now that she's had a little break. A little break. You're done. And you'll see how far I swing her. And the reason I swing her that far is not just to shift her weight, but is to really soften her. Yes. Nice. The now, sessions you just looked at were impromptu. They weren't planned, but the ideas are interesting. So I want to show them to you again. This time I'm going to stage them. I'm going to use a demo horse. Walk you through them one more time. Ginger did not want to back up. Her four legs were planted in the ground. So I know in order to get her to back up, we need to get those feet moving. So we started out with this idea. Just started asking her to move her hip over, knowing that if she moves her hip over, the front end has got to loosen up a little bit. When her legs and her feet are traveling around, then when she seems soft and receptive, Put a little pressure on her front end to see if I can get the back feet and the front feet to move backwards. Let's look at that again. I'm going to move her hip over. It's easier to get the back feet going. Then when her back feet are moving around, I know the front feet also have to move eventually, even though they may plant in the beginning. When the front feet are moving well and the back feet are moving, if I put a little pressure on her, I can direct those feet backwards. Now, this is an idea that works well with most horses, but Ginger just was not responding that well to it. She planted her front end continually. So I knew then that I needed to really address the front end. So what I did is I started loosening up the front end by just moving the jaw over, moving the neck over. Some horses will start to give you this right away. Some horses are so locked up in their jaw and their neck and their shoulder that you may have to work this for a little while. So I'm going to soften up the front end beginning with the jaw and the neck. And then as we're swinging from side to side and we're softening up, I'm gonna step into her See if I can get her to shift her weight. Get her to shift her weight this way and shift her weight that way. And when I feel her softening, I'm just going to gently press on her. And chances are very good that she will start to take a few steps backwards. Why? Because I have softened up the very muscles that have locked her into a position where she does not want to back up. Let me show this to you one more time. And swing nice and soft. This may take a little time to get this kind of softness. I'm going to step into her. Let's see if we can get her to step towards me. It's easier to get her to step away from me. And when she's shifting her weight and she's soft, I'm going to gently press the base of her neck on her shoulder and also on her nose. I'm just going to start pressing a little bit. When she locks up again, as this mare just did, we're going to go back to softening. I'm not going to push on a wall. I need to soften the wall. Good girl, like that. Good girl. There are always different ways of approaching things with horses, and there's no end to exploring and discovering better ways. Getting your hands on your horse, getting close, getting physical, like I just showed you, can teach you a lot. And many horses respond very well to this approach. I'm Leslie Nichols, and as you go along in your work and play with horses, I encourage you to consider new ideas 
Keep an open mind. Get liberated.